There are many thousands or tens of thousands of possible galvanic cells, and so it would be quite a task to measure the standard cell potential for each one. But luckily, there's an easier way, which is to combine two standard half-cell reduction potentials, such as those shown in this table, to calculate the standard cell potential for a galvanic cell. This is the equation we use, in which we subtract the standard reduction potential of the half-cell on the left, which is the anode, from the standard reduction potential of the half-cell on the right, which is the cathode. But where do these standard half-cell potentials come from? Well, as illustrated here, they are determined by hooking each half cell up to a common reference electrode called the standard hydrogen electrode, in which H2 gas at one bar is bubbled through a one molar hydrogen ion solution, resulting in the half cell reaction indicated here. The standard hydrogen electrode serves as the anode, and the test electrode serves as the cathode. We set the half-cell potential of the standard hydrogen electrode to zero by definition. And so as a result, the standard cell potential we measure equals the standard half-cell potential of the test electrode. In this list, the half-cells are organized in order of decreasing reduction potential. So as we go up the list, the oxidized species in each redox pair has a stronger and stronger tendency to accept electrons and thus become reduced. And as we go down the list, the reduced form of each redox pair has a stronger and stronger tendency to lose electrons and thus become oxidized. So in a galvanic cell consisting of two of the half cells in this list, the one lower down the list will generally serve as the anode, while the one higher up in the list will generally serve as the cathode. In other words, electrons always flow up the list.